Good afternoon and welcome to round 10 of the World Monoposto Sim Racing Championship 2024 from the undulating roller coaster ride that is Portimao in Portugal. And if the track's natural elevation changes weren't enough, we're hearing from the drivers that this particular version of the track we're using today feels notoriously bumpy with unpredictable curves. So that should be fun. Joining me for the potential chaos is a man who last year commentated on this dramatic race alone. I'm, of course, joined by Robin Tubin. Robin, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ash. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah, really looking uh, forward to this run. Probably one of my most favorite modern tracks in the world. And uh, yeah, we saw a very good race last year here. A very unpredictable one as well. I think it was Yanis Wilborn finishing outside of the points. Lucas Murno crashing out in the final corner of the final lap. So, uh, yeah, plenty to look forward to this afternoon. And yes, all that coming after. We originally planned to race at Estoril. And uh, yeah, now we ended up switching to Portimao. It's now on the calendar. And it seems like this year um, we're still in for some potential surprises. So that should be fun. Um, as you can see, we've got five rounds to go, including today. Uh, we'll look at the standings in a second. Um, in fact, no, we'll look at the standings now. How about that? Let's look at the driver's standings for um, the World Championship. There's 16 points uh, between Yanis Volborn and Lucas Murno. Murno having an off day last time, hoping he can close the gap in. But there's only 12 points separating second through to fourth. Uh, so there could be a potential fight brewing there. In the meantime, Reuven Mesheda, whose team, Optimum Lee Sports, is leaving. He's still looking for a drive and looking to put himself in the shop window with, with some strong results and close the gap to that front group rather than fighting off Daniel Benton Reader for fifth. In the meantime, in the constructors, well, it's looking quite comfortable. Just the 60 points now. Um, sorry, 50 points, I should say, even between uh, Holland Rate. Have I done the maths there? Yes, 50 points. Dear me. Maths are not my strong suit. <laughs> and uh, Holland Racing Team leading uh, by a certain amount of points um, from Scuderia Cesario. Uh, 25 back between SCMM and Scuderia Cesario. Better Julia currently leading a close fight with Optiminal for fourth. But... From sixth downwards is where it gets really interesting. Any points those teams pick up today could be vital because remember where they finish in the constructors means development money for next season. And uh, yeah, at the minute, Potenza are leading that gaggle of cars, but it all change with just a few simple results. Now, what weather are we in stall for today? Well, it's pretty straightforward in the fact that we've got sun for qualifying and the race, but it's incredibly hot. So that means, paired with uh, the layout of the track, there could be a lot of stops today, two or three stops potentially in this race. So could be very interesting indeed. However, qualifying is starting, so we will head out to the track and join them for their 15-minute session ahead of the race. Waiting for the server to refresh now. And we will join. Um, some cars heading out. Oh, the timing tower still reading practice at the minute, just checking that the server has reset. Yes, there it is. Here we go. We're in the final countdown ahead of the quali session we will get started in just a moment so good afternoon everyone thanks for joining us once again qualifying now short break and then the race 65 laps of action coming your way so robin uh once again i'm going to put you on the spot who are you tipping for a good afternoon well, I must say from what I've heard and seen before the session, I would say this now today is the comeback of Ruben Mesheda. Um, he played himself down a bit ahead of this race, putting Holland Racing Team on the spot and uh, yeah, declaring them the favourites. But I think Ruben might have the upper hand here today. Yes, of course, he won here last season. Um, it was uh, his second win of the season, going back to back. That's uh, it's a good shout. Um, and HRT have played themselves down a lot this afternoon. Um, 
and it's, time will tell if they're sandbagging or just trying to maybe lure their competitors into a false sense of security. Um, but in terms of the times coming up to here, they haven't looked quite as quick. But, you know, the sandbags are about to come off. We'll see how close that is. I'm going to tip Lucas Murno for recovery this afternoon. Um, obviously, as you mentioned in the intro, crashing out uh, on the final lap of the race last year. Uh, I think he might come back and put up a fight this afternoon. But uh, it's going to be very interesting to see. But as is so often the case, our first car across the line is going to be the reigning champion, Yanis Volborn, in the Holland Racing Team car. Let's join him for a lap of Portimao Circuit into Turn 1 Primera, breaking this by the 50 board, firing the car across before into heavy on the brakes into Turn 3 Lagos. The exit of Turn 4 is one that's been picked up as being quite awkward in terms of throwing people off and uh, throwing people up into the air. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Into the heavy braking zone, turn five, Tora Vip. Or Tora VIP, I'm not sure. I think it's written Vip. Um, answers on a postcard for that one. Uh, running through turn seven, then looping it round into turn eight, Samsung. Over the crest of the hill, turn nine, Craig Jones, before rising once again to turns 10 and 11. Really interesting. And to get the car straightened up we're getting on the brakes through 11. Then another awkward rise, a crest through turn 13. And then the track dips back round through 14. A little bit of a correction there from Yanis Volborn. But then power down through turn 15. Sounds flat to me. And all the way up to the line we go. And he is going to set the early pace. And the time on the board is a 1 minute 17.2. That's a good start. We were seeing 1.16s in the uh, practice server ahead of the race. We're expecting times to come down and measure to drop to 1.17 in. And uh, as times come in, Mescher and Volborn very much head and shoulders above the rest at the moment. Yeah, it was quite interesting. Um, well, I expect Myrna to be up there as well. Um... As you already said, I think he's also a very good tip for Paul and the race win here. Uh, considering, yes, he crashed last year in the final call of the final race, but he was running third up until then, so he was on course for a podium finish, and this one is when he was still racing for Infernal Void. Uh, so he was performing quite well on this track. So, yeah, also good chances for a comeback in the title fight for Lucas Murno. Paulo Lamy, who we see right now, uh, he also looked quick in the uh, build-up to this session. But let's see if he can also deliver... Oh, that is a big slide through Toro VIP, Toro VIP. Um, but yeah, let's see if he can perform under pressure when it counts. His first lap hasn't got him quite close. Um, we see the first of our newcomers today, Misha Smith, uh, this afternoon in for Mark Jordan um, and potentially being evaluated for the remainder of the season. Mark Jordan uh, has a lot of studies for the remainder of the season, so his availability is dropping. So Misha Smith may come in for the remainder of the season, but is being evaluated this afternoon for Bella Cheetah. Going Daniel Benton reader when he just peels off. At the minute, it's uh, Meshidor and Volborn comfortably ahead of the rest, and then a second gap back to Lucas Murno. So, time for the grid to respond, but that's uh, two pretty strong markers down in. Now, Fernando heading through. He scored points in the last two races, making the most of Magnum's big post summer upgrades. Up to 13th for now. Yeah, Zhao has really made a habit of keeping his nose clean um, as much as possible. And uh, this has really paid off for him and Magnum Motorsports. As they also in that fight that you've already introduced us to, uh, the build up to this uh, stream. Um, they are still in a fight for P6 in the Constructors Championship in a very contentious field. 
And speaking of those teams, just a shout out to Gabriel Peckley at the minute is up in P4 in the Potenza, uh, splitting the Scuderia Cesarios. He's coming round for another outlap now. But what a great start to the session that is. Now, obviously, there's a lot of time to be found, as we can see with the gaps there. But it's a great opening lap. And if the drivers are feeling slightly uncomfortable with this version of the track, this could be an opportunity for those who are maybe just uh, feeling a bit more confident on the throttle um, to get pick up a really good result in both qualifying and the race. Let's see if he can improve as we head down into turn one. He's got a Coztec just behind him, uh, the Quercio. Through turn three we go. Tiptoeing the throttle a little bit over the rise. Car's getting thrown off there if you're a bit too aggressive over the over the rise through turn four. So as you can see, we I mean, even saw it with Volborn's lap lifting off just to make sure you get round the corner. The very tidy run through eight. Oh, and just getting a little bit on the curb there as he's trying to apply the throttle. I'm with you uh, as well, Robin, that this is one of the most fabulous uh, newer circuits in the world. The elevation changes, mounted with how the track kind of flows through it, is just fabulous. Yeah, and I actually had the chance to, to be there, and not really for an event. I was on holiday uh, close by and dropped by the circuit. So I saw a few, couple of GT3 cars testing there. Um, and it is really stunning also in real life if you ever have the chance to be there. It's uh, yeah, working really well with the scenery of the Algarve anyway. But oh, hang on, here is maybe an improvement. It is an improvement by Ruben Meshede. 16, that's very... 8, sorry. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Now I say it's very interesting that the improvements there. Pushka's managed to get a little bit closer, but no one's really pressuring that much. Um, you know, Peckley's improved to go a lot faster than Pascal Polans. La Flamme is currently ahead of Polans as, uh, Polans as well. And uh, worth noting, Axel La Flamme in for Infernal Void today, as uh, Gonzalez Cativo not available uh, to race. Um, so it's uh, very interesting. And, and you may notice Victor B, the other Infernal Void car, currently not here. Um, he's been struggling with uh, power issues at home. Uh, I believe he's suffering from a power cut essentially and would only be able to make the race if power is restored and at the minute he's not here so there might only be the substitute of Axel of Lamb racing for Infernal Void this afternoon. Yeah the poor lag for Infernal Void just continues this season now they don't even make it to the start because of <laughs> things out of their influence so yeah that, that really is a horrible season for them. Uh, once again, we've got Max Heyman, who's been a super sub for three teams this season, and he's been a super sub for Better Julie before. He's back again in the spot of Denny Vella, and across the line, he's up to 12th. Also, shout out, we've got Lucas Murno up now to second, ahead of Volborn, just three tenths away from Ruben Merchida. So, times are starting to come down. I think everyone's starting to find their confidence a little bit now. But as you can see, they're having to tiptoe through certain parts. Um, having to feel their way through and not jump the gun when it comes to uh, putting the power down. Doing Misha Smith now coming round the final corner. Powering towards the line. I think this is an improvement for him. It is by one. Jumps him over Quercio in the Coztec. However, interestingly enough, his teammate, who is also a stand-in for Vela Cheetah, uh, is Alfie White, uh, up in 10th at the moment. Um, Alfie White in for Jendrik Beerhoff. So we've got, at the minute, three substitutes racing for Infernal Void and Vela Cheetah. They Victor to be missing. It'll be very interesting to see how this completely refreshed lineup does. In the meantime, Gino Gagiano Racer and team boss for SCMM across the line, and he goes into the top 10 ahead of Alfie White.
He gained oh a bit of a moment there for Alfie White. He keeps it out of the wall though. So no harm done there. Maybe just a bit of a square set of tires now. But there is also still enough time to head into the pits and change them if that should be necessary. He carries on though, starting another flying lap. Seems to have gotten away with it there, but not too bad. Getting right over the curbs. That's another point of contention. Finding them uh, slightly unpredictable if you get on them. So they're not going to be riding the car, the curbs quite as hard uh, this afternoon. Nice line there through Tora VIP. I'll just I'll just change the name of that corner. <laughs> alternatively throughout the afternoon just to cover my bases I think it might actually be Toro VIP because there is a tower there which might be for VIP guests so that it would, seems logical that <laughs> would make sense wouldn't it that would but I've never been one to follow sense but that <laughs> does sound like it makes sense here comes Axel Laflamme across the line. Is that an improvement? Yes, up to seventh uh, ahead of Peckley and Villani. In the meantime, like... Pascal Poland's also improved. He's up to fifth, so that is more like where we are used to seeing him. But still, Pascal told us um, ahead of the race that he's, he's struggling a bit with this track. Yeah, and it seems like, you know, they weren't completely lying. HRT not quite as on the pace, very much struggling. We did just see Yanis Volborn on a purple first sector, so he might get improved. Is this going to be improvement for Lucas Merno? No, he's peeling off and in. In the meantime, Volborn not a purple middle sector, but still an improvement. Is this going to be enough for him? Just over two minutes left in the session. Charging might be good towards. enough for second, definitely. Comes across the line, and it is indeed enough for second. He's just missed out by two hundredths of a second and it's the fight's not over and i think oh yanis looks like he's gone straight into another flying lap and that makes sense he, i don't think he'd have time to get round into the pit so this is probably going to be his final run and then you can see from those few corners he is really pushing it the car not looking the most settled but he's gone purple again by one hundredth of a second through tora vip yeah, but he is now on a bit of a disadvantage. Uh, Ruben Mesh, they were able to go for a fresh set of tyres for their final runs. Lucas Mena, we saw him peel into the pits, and that is well blown off, and now that definitely is it. For this run, at least, he can go another lap. He will cross the line in time, but the thing is, has he got enough fuel with him, and will the tyres be able to carry on Ruben Mesh? That is also not looking good. Yeah, he's going to have to push it round if he wants to go for another lap. I would say he's just staying out of the way of people. That might be his last chance gone. Yeah, because think... Murno now is in a very good opportunity. If both of the main rivals aren't going to have a right to apply, could Murno do something now? This is now the opportunity for someone to step up and snatch pole position away from the big favourites for this. I think Mashed and Wolbon may both be out of it now. Obviously, Meshida in, in the provisional pole seat at the minute. But he is open to people snatching it off him. And Lucas Murno charges through turn one. That's looking pretty tidy. Heavy on the brakes into three. Flips the apex. Little lift just at the crest there. Four. Wolborn has come into the pit, so he's definitely out of this qualifying session. No improvement from Yanis Wolborn. Here comes Philip Pushka. Improvements in both, but down, I think, by roughly half a second. Could this leap him ahead of Murno or Volborn? It doesn't. It is an improvement, but it leaves him there. We go back to Lucas Murno, who was only down by six hundredths of a second in the first sector. So it's still on. He still may be able to take a front row slot, if not provisional pole. Charge. He's down now in the middle sector, 1.8. Uh, sorry. No, it's, good. It's, gonna eight, one eight. it's going to have to be a, um, a good final sector to do it. Hard on the power. Will it be a front row place? 
Or will he have to settle for third? Lucas Murno charges towards the line. And he does take a front row slot alongside Ruben Meshida. Just looking at the track, there's a couple more coming round. Jan Fernando, what can he do? Little, little improvement there. Misha Smith now. Going through that final sector. We've got the last few cars coming through now. Looks like he's slowing. Or is he slowing down? Not like he didn't look particularly quick through the final corner, but I think he, he is going full throttle and he does improve ahead of Max Heyman. Pascal Poland in the meantime, fifth. And I think that might bring our qualifying session to an end. Lucas Murno couldn't take advantage of the fact that his two main rivals had basically botched their final runs, but it was enough for Ruben Meshida, the man who's been the early pace setter, ahead by three tenths of a second, just ahead of Lucas Murno, Yanis Volborn, Philip Pushkin, Pascal Perlin's recovering to fifth. Alexander Knezovic is sixth. Axel Flam on his in his third race and debut for Infernal Void in seventh. Head of Gabriel Peckley, Paolo Bellamy in ninth, or Gino Gajano in the SCMM rounds out the top ten. Daniel Benson Reader can only manage eleventh, he'll be slightly disappointed with that. Jao Fernando, twelfth. Alfie White and Misha Smith, the super subs for Velocita Virtuale in thirteenth and fourteenth, with Max Heyman and Mauricio Quercio rounding out the grid. So we are going into a short break ahead of the race, which will start uh, in about ten minutes' time. But um, just to mark the occasion, Optimal Esports have announced that they will not be rejoining the grid next season. So here's a little tribute to their short time in the sport. Third provisionally. Can anyone respond while well, Ruben... Oh, Ruben Meshed has got two purple sectors. This is going to be even quicker for Ruben sector it's an incredible win and a long overdue one for Ruben Meshida and an incredible one too for Optimal Esports. Don't help him at all he will finish outside of the points Ruben Meshida wins for the second time in the WMSC congratulations. Meshida coming through the chicane there right now he will become a four-time winner in WSC it might not be enough. <laughs>
Welcome back to round 10 of the World Monoposto Sim Racing Championship from Portimao in Portugal. The race is about to start. Uh, let's quickly go through the grid one more time before lights out. Pole position from last year's winner at this circuit, Ruven Meshter, with a great recovery after a poor result last time for Lucas Murno, starting second, ahead of Yanis Volborn and Philip Pushka. Pascal Poland's can only manage fifth ahead of the other Scuderia Cesario, whereas Axel Flam in today for the first time at Infernal Void, the only Infernal Void car, alongside Gabriel Peckley on row four. Paolo Valami and Gino Gajano make row five, while Daniel Bentonweed will be disappointed with his 11th ahead of João Fernando. It's an all Vela Cheetah, all substitute row seven, with Alfie White and Misha Smith. Max Hayden, 15th, and Mauricio Quercio, 16th. A few drivers missing this afternoon, not mentioning mainly uh, Victor B, who would have been here, but unfortunately having to miss out due to a power cut. Just wait for the cars to pop in. Remember, no formation lap. And then we will go racing. We are keeping one eye on what tyres everyone's using. We're thinking it could be a two or three stop race. And we have to use at least once of the compounds each. But for now, the revs come up, the lights go on, off we go. And it's a brilliant start from Ruben Meshner. He seems to just get away quicker than everyone else. And at the minute, the big loser seems to be Yanis Volborn, who's gone out. But oh, they're all going a bit wide. And quite a few running out wide of turn one. And oh, this couple wider and couple off in the back. That looks like Axel of Flam, potentially, and one of the... SCMMs. It's Gajano, I think. Pushka is in second. <clears throat> and there's a collision immediately into turn one, but incredibly, both the HRTs have lost positions. Knezovic has had a very solid start up to fifth, and it's Meshida from Pushka from Murno. And maybe it wasn't somebody, maybe Holland Racing Team might be struggling this afternoon. Over the hill we go. 
Very good start from uh, Philip Pushka. Myrna and Wilborn were quite busy battling each other and Pushka just seized the opportunity, sending it up the inside into turn one. Uh, Myrna and Wilborn were both off the track in turn one, so uh, they won't be too happy with that. I think Myrna missed the apex a bit as well. I think he's uh, been pushed while vinging to see if there's any... Um any repercussions for any of the uh, running wide or the collisions in uh, in turn one. Nothing yet, but as we head through lap one, and Axel of Flam has been given a penalty. It's a it's a drive through for the collision with you know Axel of Flam. Every week so far seems to have a very eventful uh, eventful race to say the least. He's going to go in there and get his damage repaired, and then he will have to come back and serve another penalty. Not an ideal start. Oh, well, the opposite can be said about João Fernando, starting from 12th up to 8th, once again keeping his nose clean, making up four places on the first lap. Even he's just behind Gabriel Peckley, remember these two teams um, fighting over sick in the title among, you know, several others. It's a great start. Let's have a look at that start again, though. And we watch Gino Gagiano from further back. So you can see La Flamme is in the front of the picture, the orange car just at the bottom of the screen. Um, so Gajano comes from a long way back to end up having the collision with the Flam. Oh, and that's what happens. The Flam's lost it on his own, maybe on the curbs, and comes back across track and ends up collecting Gino Gajano. And it's incredible that that was the only person he collected. Yeah, I think it was João Fernando really missing that by inches. He went through just on the inside, so he was really lucky not to get. Oh, but something happened to him now. He was 8th when we were watching him last time. Now he's down to 11th again. Passed by Heyman, Gulami and White. So he must have had an off moment somewhere. He didn't just lose three spots that easily. And as mentioned, this, uh, this circuit, many of the drivers have said that it's quite difficult. The bumps are incredibly bumpy. The curbs are very unpredictable. They've caught out La Flamme. And they might have caught out João Fernando as well, so... No one really safe this afternoon. Now here's a look at the start from Yanis Volborn's perspective. So they are three wide for a moment, but then both wide, kind of forced off the track there a little bit by Lucas Murno. And then Knezovic is trying to elbow his way through as well, but has to concede it because he's on the outside of turn four. And then it does settle down, but... Yeah, I wonder if they even took a little bit of damage from that, because it definitely looked like there was some contact through there as well. Well, I think the game even goes to them. They were inside one another at one point. Uh, so maybe even a bit of, of network issues. I don't know. Uh, but it looked very odd at one point. Quite possibly with a minute. Ruben Mescheder has started um, incredibly fastest lap. Two laps in a row. Uh, and, oh, Murno is ahead of Pushka. Oh, and he's trying to go around the outside of turn one. He's had to go off the track again, and he's conceded the position. And at the minute, Murno looking like he's looking a bit racy, but Volborn can try and take the moment. As you see, that little rise over turn four, you cannot get the power down as early as you'd like. Volborn has a look into Toro VIP, but they hang on for now. And at the minute, Volborn just waiting to uh, collect three positions should these two fight each other but Murno looking slightly racier than Pushka it seems but you've got to be so careful on this circuit and I think both Murno and Wilborn can go quicker than uh, Philip Pushka ahead of them let's see another replay of what happened to Joao Fernando okay Ooh. yeah and he has just lost it there um, on the run down to uh, turn 12 yeah, I think just uh, getting into the final sector is when that happens. Lucas Murna will have another chance on the start finish straight now. He looks a bit far away. Can open DRS. No, he won't have any chance this time around. Poland's just passed. Oh no, Kelovic and Poland are having a bad war. They. We're changing places then. The minute the run down into turn one seems like the prime opportunity, and Poland's 
having another look in the run down to turn five. And Knezovic looked like he's struggling slightly compared to Pascal Polans. It's definitely not the easiest track to overtake. It's definitely possible, but not so easy. But I do actually like that. Uh, that was not my brain freezing. We actually got a call from Race Direction. So it was um, Myrna received a warning for the Turn 1 incident at the start. And a final warning was also issued to uh, uh, Philip Pushka for pushing Myrno off track. This is when we were just joining them, when they were side by side. And this time around, Lucas Myrno is a lot closer. Philip Pushka already defending the inside line. Myrno tries it round the outside. This is a very brave move. Once again, there is contact. Oh, and there is Yannis Wolbo now as well. I wonder if there's going to, race control are going to get involved in that because again he was slightly bumped wide and Volborn has been brilliant opportunist there takes the move per beautifully around the outside of four and we know it is slightly difficult and during all that um, Pascal Poland has also managed to clear Knezovic so in the space of a few corners uh, two places gained for the Holland Racing team and two places lost for Scuderia Cesario and here is that overtake uh, and this time it is um, over the main straight but this time Poland's make sure he has the inside line and the move is done before we even arrive at the braking zone. Yeah, this is what makes overtaking so difficult at this track. Turn 1 is not really a big braking zone. It's quite the fast right hand, a double apex right hand that actually turns 1 and 2. Um, so you need to be in a good position already slightly you had to be able to pull off the move. Werner was alongside, but he was on the outside, so it's very difficult and risky to pull that one off. Let's watch what Lucas, uh, what Janis Wolborn is able to do against Philip Pushka. He is close. Oh, and again, though. Pushka has got his strategy for defending into turn one. It's take the inside. He definitely didn't push him wide there, but if you're holding the inside line into one, it's hard to hang it round the outside there. And this is what I like. You actually have to work for an overtake there. It's not like um, uh, Monza, uh, where you just open the rear wing and breeze past into turn one, or just able to do a dive bomb or the camel straight in Spa Frank was shot. Here, you actually need to position your car grade to line the move up and you have to properly work for an overtake. The good news in all this is while these three are fighting, Reuven Mesheda is just coolly and calmly pulling open a five second gap to the cars behind him. And you know, we talk about Reuven Mesheda a lot as a title contender. He was the main title contender last season, but he's yet to win a race this season. Uh, and today he's got his best chance of becoming only the fourth driver to have won a race in each of the WMSC seasons so far. It's a, a very solid start after pole and a great start off the line. But at the minute, the main action is between these three. And at the minute, Volborn is moving, trying to break the toe from Murno. Now he's the one that looks like more being under attack than getting the attacking on to Philip Pushka. And uh, this could be interesting. These three dueling, not always guaranteed that it ends well. So I'm sure there'll be a few drivers behind hoping that it, uh, it, goes, uh, it goes a bit south so they can inherit some places. But so far, great stuff from these three. Yeah, Wilborn and Murno do have kind of a history in the WMSC together. Uh, we saw them battle last year a couple of times. We saw them battle a lot this year. A lot of final warnings have been issued. No penalties yet, if I recall correctly, but yeah, they, they're they used to battling each other. Obviously, Murno still hoping to close that gap. Uh, 16 points between them. Um, and just had a call from Axel Laflamme to respect the blue flag, and I feel like he must have done by this point because he is already showing that he is a lap down. Uh, unless there was someone else, uh, unless, he, unless he's already been lapped by these three and he's further down the order. But it must be tough, only 10 laps in, you're lapped down, you're wanting to try and 
get some sort of return on your afternoon. Uh, and it's very hard if you want to try and push forward, but you have to uh, give way to the cars behind you. In the meantime, there was half a door open there. A little bit of a little odd connection between Volborn and one of the curbs. We almost saw an opening for Lucas Myrna there, but thought against it. wasn't quite wide enough. I think there was even contact between the two. Uh, going into turn three. Uh, Wolborn went off track into turn one. Oh, that's Alfie a brilliant White passing. Move. Yeah, very good. Very well done against Joel Fernando. And yeah, both the Bella Cheats are now running 11th and 12th. Um, and it's good to see them running well. See what they can do. Can they break into the top 10? In the meantime, second, third, and fourth coming through round turn 14 now. At the minute, it looks like Volborn now is in potential attacking range of Philip Pushka, but he's got a good exit out of the final corner. Don't think anyone's going to be quite close enough to make a move this time around. So Quercio has gone into the pits. Uh, and I think made an early switch of tyres to the Super Soft. Um, speaking of tyres, everyone apart from Paolo Valami and Max Heyman started the race on mediums. Um, yeah, Valami and Heyman, the only two on Super Softs to begin with. We will see what the tyre wear is like. Meantime, still White and Fernando trading places. Fernando was briefly out of White again, so that battle is not quite over. But naturally, we're focusing on this one because this is where the money is at. Quite literally, actually. So, all once again, Wolborn off the track, and this has allowed Myrna to get very close to the back end of that HLT again. We've not seen this side of Volborn's driving this year, because remember last season when they had a lower downforce philosophy car? There were tracks where they weren't as quick, so they had to really push it to be fast. Um, Hockenheim is one that comes to mind, and uh, you'd see mistakes happen. And because they've got a higher downforce car this season, we've not seen it as much, but today they're clearly not as quick, and he's having to push it to keep pace. And it's leaving him open for mistakes, and he almost goes a little bit wide there on the exit of turn one. And, you know, track limits are policed by the game, so you have to be careful there. If you run it too wide, you might be asked to slow down or risk a penalty. Has managed to stay ahead of Lucas Murno this time. But there's a real ebb and flow to these three. Like, Philip Pushka isn't obviously pulling away from them, but I, I, at the minute, it's hard to tell who really oh, is the quickest! Context. Oh, and they switch places at incredibly white hair again. But I, I feel like they were trading slots to try and get their preferred line into turn one. But my goodness, how was that not a bigger accident? Yeah, I'm sure our race direction will have something to say about that. But back on the topic, Yanis Wolborn. He had a horrible weekend here uh, last year and he just I think he doesn't really like that track all that much. Uh, now the car should be suited much better to it uh, with the high downforce philosophy but still he is having these moments that you don't see often uh, from him. He had a couple of races where this happened last year most notably Perez, Hockenheim and Baltimore. We haven't really seen it this year but this is more looking like the rather struggling Yanis Wolborn that we saw here last year. Yeah, Philip Pushke is just bu completely bulletproof so far. Sorry, he's not had a single mistake so far. So it's all the harder for these two to get past him. I think that's very true of Philip Pushke generally. I think it's, it's rare you see him make mistakes. I think most of his retirements have been due to either hardware or connection. Um, so a very reliable and obviously very quick driver, Philip Pushka, and uh, yeah, he's making sure that he's just consistent. Um, but yeah, Yanis Volborn, um, I think the only time we saw him have a moment this season 
uh, was at Spa when he uh, dropped it. And again, it just felt like the car wasn't quite set up for the circuit. Um, so it's it's interesting. It's It could be an opportunity here for Lucas Murno, but he's still going to have to work for it. And he doesn't look quite close enough. And what is helping is obviously Volborn getting DRS from Pushka. So it's going to be even harder for Lucas Murno. Um try and pull a move into one unless Philip Pushka can somehow break the DRS to Yanis Volborn. Yeah, so I think Mano might already be uh, thinking about strategy because he is obviously very close. We saw the power... Oh, Xiao Fernando, there was a yellow flag briefly and he looked very slow there, so he might have had a moment. This once again is uh, between turns 11 and 12, isn't it? Almost the same thing. Just almost as the uh, the track drops away, he's put the power on. It's caused some problems. Oh my goodness! And then uh, off in the wilds of the Algarve, he's managed to keep it going for now. In the meantime, we rejoin that bit of the track live. Run up to turn thirteen, and now Volborn is looking closer to Pushka. But Murno's tight in as well. It's how close they stay together through 14 and 15. Jao Fernando's just come into the pits to retire the car. Maybe he's picked up some damage somewhere as well. That is not fixable. Real shame for him. Two points finishes in a row coming into today. But sadly, no points for Magnum Motorsports this afternoon. And once again, as we were talking about that fight for P6 and the Constructors, look who is in P7. Once again, Gabriel Peckley is starting to pull away. And now this is interesting. Paolo Milami started the race on Supersofts, is in, and this might be the first properly scheduled stop here. Lap 14. That is not very long for the Supersofts at all. Is it going to be a switch to the mediums? Have a look. And it looks like another set of super softs for Paolo Bellarmi for now. That's interesting. We join once again. Entrance to 14. These three so, so close together. And Volborn is quite close to Pushka this time around. He might be able to have a crack. Come up to the DS DRS activation line. It's a long way. And he's gaining, gaining, gaining. But I don't think he's going to be close enough into the breaking zone of one. Yeah, the HLTs are not very fast in a straight line. Oh, we were able to see that a couple of times this year, but usually they're running together and can kind of save themselves on the long straights by uh, providing DRS to each other and slipstream of course as well so now because Poland is struggling a bit here today it's yeah all on Janis Wolborn and I think he really needs to be happy that Philip Pushka this time is kind of dragging towing him around the track because I think Lucas Murno could get past him quite easily had he not DRS the Anis Wolborn. So, uh, yeah, difficult for, for Wolborn to clear Pushkin. We've got oh, some traffic. Up there. Yeah, traffic up ahead as well. Oh my goodness, and that is Gino Gajano, who I think has stopped as well according to the timing sheet. Um, so he's having to just dive out the way. He's gone from mediums to mediums. Um, is Villami in the pits again? I was about to say, yes, I think he, he oh, is. Look at Mono, this is a move now. He's on the inside, so he has the battle line theoretically on paper. Ooh, there is contact again. And Mono backs out. Wolbo leaves the track, though. That is a very smart little bit of moving there from Yanis Volbo. He tried to keep Lucas Murno over to the extreme right-hand side as much as he could to the point where Murno was like, I want to move over, I'm not going to make the corner. That was smart defense from Yanis Volbo because yes, you want to be on the inside of turn one, but he made it so the angle, angle was so tight that Murno had to slow down a lot more. And 
I can't believe that Murno, even with both of them having DRS, got so close to be able to get alongside. Um, but the fact that Volborn had the DRS as well meant once they were side by side, Murno just couldn't get the speed he needed to get his nose ahead. What do you think? Will Lucas Murno be on the radio saying, well, he did not get that corner, he left the track on the exit, and therefore gained an advantage in that battle? I mean, you have to expect that he'll try it. Uh, I'd be surprised if he wasn't at least try kind of asking the question. Um, and as we come back round again, usually we have a call for these things quite quickly and nothing's been said uh, as we head over the line. All three still just about giving each other the DRS run into turn one. But Philip Pushka hanging on and Ruben Meshadid is holding the gap quite consistently at the moment out the front. And I was just having a look on the timing tell. We were just wondering when that happened, whether Willami uh, came into the pits a second time. Yes, indeed, he did, and now he's on the medium, so I presume he just went on the wrong tyre in that first uh, stop. Uh, yeah, so that's a shame. Like, you think, though, obviously, with that mistake having happened, you just try and make make it the stint. Oh, and goodness me, backmarker in the way, having to dive out of the way. <laughs> Fortunately, doesn't cause any issues, but Volborn is now once again close to Philip Pushka. Yeah, but this is really lovely, isn't it? I mean, the last two races were a bit slower compared to what we're used from probably in this uh, this year. But this is the action that we're so used to seeing every other uh, afternoon in this series. So, yeah, great to see Wobble having to fight for it today. Absolutely, as we head round to the main straight, to get DRS, is Philip Pushka going to move over to the right-hand side? He does immediately. He's going to make Yanis Volbon go the long way around. But he can't seem to get close enough, even with the DRS. That high downforce philosophy for Holland Racing Team, which is so much the oh. opposite way around the other time. He tries to make something happen around the outside of three. And he's having to try and get creative because he knows straight line speed isn't quite there. Is he going to have a look up into Torre VIP? He is, but Pushka goes defensive. Can he keep get the corner? They all do make it, but that obviously brings Lucas Merno back into play, which means attack might shift to defence very quickly for Yanis Volborn. In the meantime, Max Heyman into the pits. These guys all on mediums. Max Heyman was also on super soft, so he's made those last a little bit longer. Um, 17 laps, 18 laps for him, so I should say. But they are so close, they're nose to tail as they come out the exit of turn 14. Pushka from Volborn from Murno. Through 15 we go. They're all going to get DRS with the exception of Philip Pushka, who's going to be a sitting duck, but. Will he be saved by the fact oh, that Lucas Murno. Murno is very close? He is very close indeed. Murno, is he going to go to the outside? They all move together. And once again, they hold station. Someone's going to have to get creative to make something happen. Yeah, well, that's Super Paco already hinted at in the chat. Don't get too creative because that might end in a terrible crash. That would be a proper shame because that battle is so enjoyable to watch. Pascal Polans makes it into the pit, so that is the first of the top runners, first of the medium runners to uh, go into the pits. Well, let's see what he's going for. It looks like he switched to super softs if the timing tower is correct, and that looks like he has indeed gone to the super soft. So there's not that much of a difference, if it is to be believed between the tyre life of the mediums and the super softs. Only about four or five laps, but he's the first medium runner in. Maybe he's been running harder on his tyres than everyone else. But interesting, we'll keep an eye on that. In the meantime, as Ruben Meshida opens the gap to about six seconds on these three, the fight continues. The RS open for Volborn and Murno once again. I think Pushka just has the gap. 
Yeah, I think he will be quite happy with Wilborn being behind him. He had to defend a lot more against Myrna, but Wilborn just doesn't seem to be able to make the move on that main straight. Yeah, and I do think Wilborn without DRS would be a much easier prospect for Myrna. Uh, in the meantime, Gabriel Peckley having a look at Alexander Knezevich, and Peckley having another solid start to the afternoon. Potenza Esports. Seen as like the back marker coming in starting the season later after the demise of Streamline Engineering last year, and Potenza now leading the battle for sixth place. And at the minute, Gabriel Peckley taking the fight to one of the front running teams of Scuderia Cesario. Alexander Knezevich is having to defend quite hard from Peckley. Peckley doing brilliantly. Yeah, I think I've said it before, but get that man uh, a top cockpit because he is doing incredibly well in that Potenza. He wasn't even due as like one of the named drivers at the start of the season uh, and then came in from, I think, round two onwards and has just been brilliant. And he scored their uh, first points and he's been superb. In the meantime, though, this is very close for Yanis Volborn. He goes to the outside, and he's going to try and make it around the outside. I think he has done. Oh, that's an incredible move, but he's got all four wheels off the track. Philip Pushka still on the inside. Is he going to hang on through three? He's going to try and hang it around the outside to be on the inside of four. Oh, and they touch one. Contact. Oh. And they're off. And now, Murno, he's got the opportunity. He's going to look to the inside. Is Lucas Murno going to do it? And unbelievable. They're going to switch places around Volborn, but Murno's gone deep. Volborn now ahead, and now Pushka's back up to third. What an incredible exchange over those four corners. Ah, oh, Lucas Murna got a bit too desperate. He wanted to take it all there. He should have maybe just waited for the main straight once again. Because oh. now he has to do it all again against Philip Pushka. That's interesting. So Volborn made the move round the outside, but was all four wheels off the track. But then you have the other kind of flip side of it where Philip Pushka basically retook the position and then there was contact between them. So has everything just kind of evened itself out there? I think it kind of has. But it'll be interesting now with Yanis Volborn. How hard is it going to be for he to keep behind the cars with DRS? Because based on what we've seen of him with DRS, Philip Pushka might have a much easier time of it. Let's find out. DRS oh, is there open. He goes already. And it's incredibly close. In fact, he's going to go to the inside. And that was so, so oh. easy. And that proves exactly what we've been saying. That this, in a straight line, that HRT is a sitting duck. And that is why. And all of a sudden, after all of that action, one lap later, status quo has returned. Pushka from Volborn from Murno. Heckley's up to fifth. Incredible. Oh, and I think he got the move done earlier because it looked like that Knezevich had the DRS coming into one. But that's brilliant. In the meantime, though, Pascal Poland's on those super soft tyres is now setting the pace back in eighth. But obviously, it doesn't seem like those super softs are going to last a very long time in these temperatures around this track. And I just got interesting news from Race Direction. It is presumed that Yanis let Philip push goodbye on the main street there. I was wondering because he wasn't really defending the inside there because of that fight. They made contact, Pushka ran wide on uh, uh, the run towards uh, Toro VIP. So probably it was him letting him by to avoid the call from race direction or even a penalty there. And okay. Lucas Murno into the pits, trying the undercut now. We've always said it before so many times, the undercut, very, very powerful, especially if he's going to go to the super softs as well. So this is an important lap. If I was Philip Pushko and Yanis Volborn, I would hold off on fighting for this next lap because it does mean you're going to lose time. In the meantime, Gabriel Peckley makes the move, DRS on the main straight. And I think what we saw live was uh, Knezovic trying to fight back. Oh, and Knezovic does fight back. They go side by side through three. And they hold it through four. Brilliantly held. Great bit of racing through four there. And is Peckley going to take it through Toro VIP? I think he is. Great bit of fighting. In fact, he's not done yet. They switch sides again. But eventually Knezovic tucks in. Some excellent racing this afternoon. Now, timing... Tower suggests Murno 
has gone on the mediums and we can see it there so he's not gone to the super softs yet he's going to try and do another longer stint i wonder if this middle stint might uh, might be a bit longer so he can then just do one more stop and that last stint is super softs or if he's consigned to a three stop race we'll see in the meantime pushka is in uh yanni's wall had a spin oh i'm being told there's a big gap between these two now. There is. They're both in the pit. Let's have a look at the replay. Is it, was it straight away? This is just into turn one. He does. He drops it on the curb. And we've seen that the curbs have been unpredictable this afternoon. And that's huge. That is huge. Because that might mean... Murno's is out. But Murno's done it. He's undercut. And Lucas Murno is through. And that completely changes the dynamic in the fight for second. Because Murno was looking like the racist of the three. And Pushka was like a cork in a bottle. And now, Murno's clear. Will he be able to put the gap on Philip Pushka? In the meantime, Yanis Volborn has that spin ruined his afternoon that he's not going to be able to stick with him. Is that Volborn there? I think it is. I know it's I'm, Poland's. I'm being told Wilborn had two spins that lap. Wilborn is now on the super soft. Um, later that lap, there must have been another moment for Yanis Volborn, apparently. And the thing is, now also, Ruben Mesut is kind of forced to, yeah, and he immediately replies because Murno now being released would have meant that he can uh, catch up to our race leader now. Now, this is very interesting because there's a split of strategy as well. So Lucas Murno has gone to the medium, so Pushka and Volborn have gone to the super softs. This is, uh, is this the other spin? I think it is. And it is literally on the curb once again. Just pushing. And it's just caught him off guard. He knew that the undercut was coming. Oh, a bit of a, a laggy moment there. Apologies. Pretty sure he didn't actually do that. But this is interesting now. So, on the same time, Murno looks slightly quicker than Pushka. But, now... Pushka is on the quicker tyre, which means this fight might not be over. And they're joined by Pascal Polans, but obviously Polans on the much older tyre. The tyre offset of about five laps between these guys. Yeah, and if, if Willami is a reference, these tyres, he came into the pits lap 14. So he might already be one third through that stint. Absolutely. It'd be interesting to see if he does catch up and get involved in this fight. As it stands, uh, only Misha Smith and Alfie White have yet to stop. The Vela Cheetahs, they are running these mediums the longest. And I wonder if they're going to try and make a two-stop work in the hope it uh, picks them up some places. Stands. Philip Pushka has DRS and he closes and closes. He's not going to be close enough this lap. But if he can hold that gap over this next lap, next time around he might be close enough. But worth noting that Ruben Meshida has been in and out of the pits. He's the last to stop. The gap was about eight seconds before he stopped. It's down to five, obviously, as we know, the undercut being more powerful. But now he has track position still, and he is he's not switched to the super soft. He's on the medium tires uh, for this stint. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how these super softs now work uh, for a top driver and a top car um, in the race, because I get the feeling that they are not the most popular race tyre just because of their short lifespan. Uh, so it may even be smart from Pushka, Wallborn, and Poland's to get them out of the way early. Though Murno then has the chance to push towards the end, and so does Ruben Meshed of. Well, for now, it still seems like Mesut has not much to worry about this race. In the meantime, Pushka has, uh, has got the opportunity. He's closer. Is he going to be close enough? I think he might be. Yeah. He's going to go around the outside, and he's going to get that move done. So, an important lap now in clear air with the more aggressive tyre. Can he pull out a little bit of a gap? 
and break DRS. The gap seems to be coming down under the five second mark to Ruben Meshida. But if these two fight, that will hold station. This is an important stint for Philip Pushka if he's going to make this work. He's got to get the most out of the extra pace afforded to him by the Super Softs. Otherwise, he's uh, just wasting his time on a tyre that isn't going to last very long. Yeah, this might also not be the worst thing now for Lucas Myrna because Pushka obviously is quite quick on these Super Softs. But if he can stay within DRS, he can kind of get that advantage of a couple of tenths a lap. Uh, by being pulled by Philip Pushka. And for now, the gap is coming down. Four tenths this lap. More even. At the minute, the gap is very close to being almost out of DRS range. I think he's still going to just about get it. But well, that's a brilliant lap from Philip Pushka. I think he's done more than enough to make sure that he's not going to come under attack. And Philip Pushka, new fastest lap of the race. Uh, by six tenths of a second over the previous best, he is, without doubt, head and shoulders, the fastest man on track right now. And this is a huge, huge couple of laps and a huge potential stint for him. In the meantime, Alfie White, yet to stop, just coming up to the back of Daniel Benton Reader, um, who has stopped and is on super soft. So uh, Alfie White doing quite a good job this afternoon. Both of these guys in the Vela Cheetah have uh, kept their noses clean and as if by magic Alfie White into the pits lap 28 I think he might be trying to make a two stop work so I wouldn't be surprised if he maybe does another medium and finishes on super softs potentially or is he going to do the super soft stint now let's see but Jack's getting serviced by the team and so, visually we can see white wall tyres, but my timing tower is saying he's gone to the super softs. So we'll see, uh, we'll see if that updates in a moment. Charge through turn one. I think it's, no, it's still, still a white wall tyre there. Still showing his white wall tire. Our timing tower is saying super soft. One of them will correct itself in a moment. Or he might have just gone to intermediates and we're both wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bold strategy. We'll see if it pays off for him. Oh, and I think it might have updated then. In the meantime, though, Alexander Knezevich is being joined by another Vela Cheetah. The only car now that hasn't stopped. Misha Smith running in the points. Yeah, I think Alex just uh, passed him. Oh, is it the other way around? Yeah. Because as you just said, he's uh, still out there. The final car that hasn't stopped yet, it's Misha Smith. He'd be quite happy with his work on that tyre to get to just under half distance in it. Um, but yeah, at least... Two more stops for him, I would say. Uh, sorry. Yes, two more stops. Yeah, actually, uh, talking about strategy, I think we will see most of the cars on a two-stop strategy. Maybe except from Poland, he was in quite early uh, to get the super softs. Wilborn uh, just probably was let through by his teammate there. Um, Poland might be trying the three stop because his first stop was really early, fall up 20. The others, I think, are all on course for a two stop. Of course, Poland's on the uh, on the super soft tire now, and uh, you can see Volborn and Poland's have switched places. Obviously. Um... It was slightly out of sequence because, uh, you know, Poland's having stopped earlier, then got ahead. The gap between Meshida and Pushka is every now and then dropping below four seconds even. Myrna was just inside the DRS, he may have just dropped out. But he also got pulled closer towards Meshida. Yeah, and you can already see them there. And we're at the final corner. 
And this may now be a three-way fight for the win here. Very interesting now, this divergence on tyres. So obviously Ruben Meshida will finish the race on the Super Soft. But he is going to have to potentially get his hands dirty as we have Mauricio Kershio off in the background there. Two laps down, having a moment in the Coztec, and I think he's just going to have to slam on the brakes and wait for the leaders to go through. If he's picked up a little bit of damage from that, looking a little bit sheepish. Very soon going to have the Holland Racing Team guys behind him. In the meantime, Daniel Benton Reader catching Misha Smith. Still yet to stop. Got relatively fresh super softs compared to uh, Smith's mediums that started the race. That extra grip, he's going to have a look at a move, and Smith is fighting it, despite the fact that they are very much on different strategies at this point. And Benson Reed is going to try and send it all the way around the outside, doesn't quite get it. Both respectfully leaving each other the space, but Benson Reader knows that he's going to be quicker, and he doesn't want to get stuck behind him for too long. Benson Reader qualifying down the order, uh, back in 11th, but eyeing up a point this afternoon. Oh, and he doesn't have to fight him too hard because Smith will be going in the pits. Benson Reader may be thinking about trying to get up to people like Knezovic and Peckley. But that's cost him uh, a lot more time than it needed to. Smith, you know, yes, they're on different strategies, but well within his right to fight it. Yeah, of course, and I don't know what they're trying to do at Villa Cheetah. Maybe they're going for a very, very ambitious one-stop strategy. He might be fighting Benton Reader later this race, so every every second that he can cost him now might benefit him later on. Yeah, is he going to try and get to, like, lap 45 um, and beyond on these mediums to then switch to the Super Soft? That would be a hell of a move um, for Misha Smith. But look at how quickly Daniel Benton Reader has managed to reel him back in. Once again now, he's just reaching him at that point of the track where overtaking is almost impossible. Probably once again, he needs to wait for the start-finish straight. Oh, and Smith has just been given a warning for that altercation on the previous lap. So we will see if uh, Benton Reader tries it again. It was on the run-up to turn 10 last time around. Yeah, I think there was a little twitch by Misha Smith on the braking. And now Benton Reader, oh, cleanly done this one. And try and make that extra grip work and he gets it done that's uh not too many moves in there today but very nicely done and uh we'll look to uh now get nine seconds up the road to alexander knezovic see what he can do see immediately how much that extra grip is helping him myth still out there to go as long as he possibly can it seems now surpassed the halfway point of the race, which uh, I don't think we were expecting as Benton Reader gets a little bit out of shape in the exit of one. So I think the tyre advantage from Pushke is now slowly getting away from him. The gap is not coming down as quickly as it was before. Well, he's just proving me wrong, but... It was now a bit stationary at a high 3.7, 3.8 second mark. Oh, now it's up to 4 again. Lucas Murner, though, interestingly, is dropping further back from Ruben Meshede. One or two tenths a lap now that uh, he has does not have the DRS anymore. But interestingly, Yanis Wolman is also not really making any impression on Murner, even though Wolborn is on the Super Softs. No, I think, uh, as you say, the advantage of the Super Soft is very much at the start of the window, and then it's uh, it kind of goes off. And I think a lot of those runners on the Super Soft now will be looking at when they can safely switch back to the mediums. And I think around lap 40, leaving you um, with about 24, 25 laps, is about the window, because that's what they've just done those starters on the medium tyre they know it can run for that well so 
I think they'll look to ditch these at the uh, earliest reasonable convenient point. Yeah, but this is a very interesting prospect for later in this race. We know Meshid and Murnus still have to put the Super Softs on. Now, of course, the cars later in the race will be a bit lighter, so they may be a bit more easy. Oh dear, oh dear, we've just received a drive through penalty for Alfie White uh, from Race Control for ignoring blue flags, blue flags for two sectors straight. Unfortunately, you uh, you can't do that. And uh, Philip Pushka that's just coming up to him. I think it is. I think he's he's been essentially impeded the race leader by the sounds of it then. So yeah, Alfie White will have to serve a penalty. That's a shame. He's He's been having a good afternoon up to this point. Both of the substitute Villa Cheetah drivers keeping their noses clean. Uh, as you say, Misha Smith's working miracles on that medium tyre at the moment. <laughs> he has lost four seconds on Ben Tavreen and the course of how many laps? Two? So, I know it's, that it's really working, that strategy. Well, it's, it, this is it. It's, it. Is he going to try and extend to the one stop? Surely by this point, that's got to be the call, right? Because if he's just going to do a two-stop, but maybe just do two extreme push on super softs, I don't, I can't see that. So surely he's trying the one-stop. In the meantime, Alfie White in the pits now to serve that penalty. And there is a car coming in just behind him. It is Pascal Poland's. So, lap 36, he has been on those super softs for 16, 17 laps. That, that confirms what we've seen from Willami earlier this race. I mean, 10, 10 laps and the advantage was away. This is going to be quite a long final stint on these mediums, though, compared to what we've seen everyone else do. Um... Everyone, the most of the front runners stopped around laps 23 to 25. Again, oh, is it? It is. He has gone for it. So this is going to be a three stopper then. Pascal Polans. Yeah, I don't see him merge these tyres 30 laps. I think that is an impossible feat. Oh, he's in just going to. Oh, oh, interesting. He's had to go round that kerb. I don't think he wanted to risk going over it, so he ran a bit wide. Just stayed off the track. So interesting, I wonder if he's just going to use super soft to the end now and just go complete push all the way, because he started on the mediums. Yeah, he might do that. I think he's now in a position to do that. So I don't see any reason why he shouldn't go for it now. But yeah, still the thing is, they are not... They're not that quick, the HRT this afternoon, and that was very ambitious. Yeah, I think when the, the start-finish straight is coming up, and you've got DRS, that was a slightly unnecessary look at the inside in it, Pascal but, Polans. Yeah, remember, the, the HRT is not the quickest car on the straight, though it's enough against Peckley. Maybe lacking the confidence to even <laughs> get past the Potenza in a straight line. <laughs> But uh, he's through on the softer rubber, and now he's got clear air to try and make uh, what we think is the start of, essentially, two push stints on the super softs work. Uh, but Peckley doing well, running sixth, and uh, it's another solid afternoon so far for him. Yeah, believe it or not, that was actually the second on-track battle for position that he had with Pascal Polans this year. <laughs> <laughs> The, the first one came in Canada when they were actually fighting for a podium, which actually unfortunately uh, did not get because of a five second time penalty he received early in this race. But it was a tremendous battle over a whole lap. This is now another battle that we're watching. Alfie White back from his drive through penalty just behind Paolo Willami. Ooh. Oh, like a slight sharp change of direction to try and break the toe. Um, and is White going to have a look? He's going to go to the extreme inside. Oh, and they leave each other the room, and Valami, fair play to him, does leave the space quite nicely. And uh, Alfie White gets the job done. Uh, Valami not risking a collision there. In the meantime, Pascal Poland's 
fastest man on track with those knee super softs. Philip Pushkin, interestingly, still making those super softs work. With his efforts to catch up to measure the stall a bit for a couple of laps, but now he's just three seconds behind, sometimes even dropping below that three seconds mark. So he still can do a couple of laps with them, I think. Interesting insight there in the chat from uh, Bella Cheetah and Infernal team boss Paul Muller. Uh, I think Misha's strategy can work because Heyman can't get close to him, so he can make a one stop, uh, and someone from one of the first eight drivers can make a big mistake, and he ends up in the points. And in fairness, you know he is—he has lost a lot of time to Benton Reader, but as you say, he's holding station uh, ahead of Max Heyman. So if he can make the one stop work. There might be a chance for him this afternoon. In the meantime, Max Heyman diving out the way of the race leader, Reuven Meshter. The gap down to under three seconds. Pushka is slowly reeling him in, but it doesn't look like he's going to be quite close enough before the end of this stint. As we approach lap 40, I'm expecting any time now, um, Yanis Volborn and Philip Pushka to potentially come in. And I think as long as for the Pushka is not dropping back from Ruben Meshadur, I don't think he will be coming in, so he still has a couple of laps in those tires. I don't know about Janus Wolborn though. Very interesting how it's just not been working for them this weekend. You'd expect this to be a track where they do well with their design philosophy, but it, it isn't. But then again, we also thought that they might struggle last weekend at Monza with their high downforce car, but it's it was working out for them. And Heyman diving out of the way of Philip Pushka. Pushka continue his push to try and get closer to the race leader. He's not giving it up this afternoon. Gap is coming down. It seems yeah. like he's still got the life in those. Last time around, though, there was only five hundredths of a second between Philip Pushka and Ruben Meshida. Pushka, slightly quicker, but not, not by a lot. But this is looking increasingly well for Ruben Meshida. He will still have a stint on those super softs, though, because of the split of strategy, Pushka will be coming in much earlier for what we presume will be another pit stop for the medium tyres to end this race on, and then he will be able to undercut Mesher, then Mesher will probably have to make the move on track for the race lead again. It is going to be, can he make the tyre offset work? Can he use his fresher super softs to get past the worn mediums, uh, or what will then by then be worn mediums? Uh, for Philip Pushka. So it promises to be an interesting fight to the end. Uh, in the meantime, Mauricio Quercio, uh, currently our last man running on the field. Uh, two laps down. Uh, thinking about a little bit, but he's still running. The only Coztec here this afternoon. In the meantime, Paolo Valami has just gone in. what will be his third pit stop of the afternoon but obviously um, that's only because his uh, first change went onto the wrong tyre, came in lap 14 and put super softs on but having started on super softs that is not what he wanted to do, came back in a lap later to put on the mediums uh, I think this might be well, it looks like he, there's quite a long stop and I'm wondering if there's some damage being repaired actually as well And is that mediums to the end? I think it is for Paolo Bellami. And now I think we are definitely at the point where you can go to the end of the race if you stop to, uh, on to the mediums. So that's all stops done now for Paolo Bellami. Involuntary three stop strategy here today. So now the interesting thing is when do Pushka and Wolvon make the call? Pushka is still 
closing up to Ruben Messi, but the gap was just two seconds a couple of seconds ago. It's going up and down every now and then, but still, I think in total he is gaining. Yeah, once I was about to compare lap times for the last lap, but I think Philip Push could reach track limits at one point because his last lap is showing up as blank. Um, but based on the first couple of sectors, it's about even. Philip Pushka was two tenths faster in the first sector, but two tenths slower than Ruben Meshida in the second sector. So they are very tight on pace at the moment. And now I think we might properly be into that crossover territory. And I was thinking he was trying to head towards the inside of the track and into the pit. But I think he's now reaching that point that we saw Paolo Milami and Pascal Poland's reach. 15, 16 laps on those tires. He's very close to that now. I mean, in the car, he'll know what ideally uh, he'll want to move on. For his final tire he's got free choice essentially having done a stint on the mediums and the super softs so who knows if he's feeling good he might think oh actually i'd like is another set of these maybe i'll run a bit longer and have a final push on super softs or is he thinking ah well i'm just trying to make this last and then i can push harder on the mediums that is actually a very interesting point you're raising because i think if he manages to do another three laps maybe on those tires then he will be able to to do exactly that but now the gap is coming up again quite significantly as well it's now over three seconds so what is Philip Pushka going for he might even come in this lap yeah is, is he now finding the moment where actually the tires have had enough to the inside to the inside and in yes I think he's read the signs there quite clearly so I'm guessing this is going to be a medium tire to the end now yeah, I think you're right. I totally agree with you. I don't think it's worth the risk going on to the Super Softs now. I think he's even one lap late, maybe. Because that crossover point has been reached. Let's see if we're right. So, timing screen has not updated yet. I think he's gone on super softs again. Timing tower says super softs. He's going to push to the end. Oh, that is now interesting. That's going to be quite a long stint. Um, 22 laps, effectively, on these super softs to the end. But maybe he's acutely aware that Ruben Meshida is going to be on the super softs at the end. And he wants to be able to fight back. But... I don't know. I, I, I don't know if they will last long enough. You've just seen them go off um, over how long was that middle stint for him? About, oh, to be fair, about 20 laps. But I it, think as, then it's possible. Possible, but as you saw, he just lost time, and Meshida is now in. And Meshida is also going to look to do a 20-lap final stint on the Super Softs, and Myrno and Volborn have gone straight in as well. They know that they'll end up losing time to Philip Pushka, so he's essentially fired the starter's pistol on the last round of stops. Yeah, he did, and I think this is the only thing Meshida was able to do now, because one or two laps longer, there he is already, Philip Pushka, so I'm just come over the crest there. Um, one more lap, and he might have been passed already, uh, so he's kind of forced the hand of Ruben Meshida there. So Lucas Murno is onto the super softs. Uh, Yanis Volborn also. So yeah, everyone in that top five are on super softs now. Misha Smith has also pitted, and as Super Parker points out, it said 45 laps on the mediums. <laughs> so let's see how this works out. And this is a tremendous opportunity uh, today, of course, for uh, Velocita Virtuali. They are currently last in the Constructors Championship, but their closest rivals are actually equal on points, Kostek. Well, Kwasio doesn't seem likely to score a point here today. They could pass them, and then they would only be one point behind Magnum Motorsports if somehow Smith 
manages to finish eighth here today. So he's got Heyman ahead of him who is yet to stop and needs to stop again. Uh, Benton Reader also has to stop as is Knezovic, but obviously as you can see the gap about 50 seconds to them so he's hoping that he's going to be able to pull in some time on those super softs now and um, we'll see what he can do with that but after that last round of stops they're all a lot closer together as you can see Poland is back ahead of Volborn but I imagine Volborn is going to be let through because he's on the softer tyre uh, it's not the softer tyre on the fresher tyre I should say excuse me um, and he's going to get onto the attack but they're much closer now to the back of Lucas Murno. So this could be interesting. This could be battle resumed um, very shortly. Oh, oh. Murdo's gone wide. Murdo has gone wide. I wonder if he was slightly impeded there by one of the Vela Cheetahs or if that was just a mistake. But now, battle is very much resumed. So can Yanis Volborn stick with Lucas Murdo throughout the lap to have DRS and mount an attack? Both on the soft, super soft tyres, both on fresh tyres, having stopped the last lap. There's an important few corners for Lucas Murno now. Down to turn 10. And even if uh, Janus Vorborn can stick with Lucas Murno, passing is an entirely different thing for them. We've seen how much he's struggling on that long pit straight. He's quite close. Will he be close enough? In the meantime, Ruben Mescher into the 1 minute 17s, uh, putting down a marker there. The gap is down at the front, but Mescher is trying to respond. In the meantime, speaking of response, oh. what can Yanis Volborn do to the outside? This looks good. He's done the move by turn one. Wow, that is a very good move, but I would say this battle isn't over yet because I think Murno is going to stick with him and we might see a reply in a lap's time. I was not expecting this, to be honest, so it seems like only the SCMM is much quicker than the HRT in a straight line. I think, um, I don't think Volborn is, is going to be insanely quicker than Lucas Murnau. I think they've been pretty close on pace all day long. So I'm imagining it's going to be switch around unless Volborn has just suddenly found, found his mojo with the super softs. Remember, Murno hasn't been on the super softs before. This is two medium stints. Whereas, uh, you know, this is Volborn's second run on the super softs, so maybe he's feeling a little bit more confident with them, knowing how hard he can push them. But here we go. The gap, I would say, doesn't look as close as it was when Volborn made the move. Here comes the DRS. How quickly will he close in? And Volborn has now set the fastest lap of the race, and all of a sudden the pace has come back, but... Murno's right with him, it's on oh, the... Oh! He's it's on the wheel the It's the same moment for Yanis Volborn, it's the same curb that they hit, but they've collected each other, and now it's a rear wing loss for Yanis Volborn, and a front wing gone for Lucas Murno. And this is going to change everything for these two this afternoon. It's happened again for Volborn at Portimao. Wow. I think that from first look, and we'll get a replay in a second, it looked like the exact same thing that happened to Yanis Volborn earlier. He got caught on that same bit of the kerb. He's lost it. And then because Murno is so close behind, they've just ended up collecting each other. And it's just an unfortunate moment that if Murno maybe wasn't quite as close, yeah, Volborn would have lost it on his own. Oh, and that's a bit of a corner cut, but I imagine he's not going to lose, uh, gain so much time. Here we go, on board with Lucas Murno. So it's on the outside curb of this turn. Oh my goodness, it's just a glancing blow. And if Lucas Murno had just stabbed on the brakes or was a little bit further away, he would have gone past Yanis Volborn and neither would have had the damage. Volborn is in for the final stop. Murno is coming in for a new front wing. I've just got confirmation also of via chat from race control. It is uh, judged as a racing incident. I think this is absolutely true. A uh, little moment for Volborn. No time for Murno to react. It even looked a bit like Natco that uh, contact because from the onboard of Murno, it was just a very slight touch 
if at all. So there is now Yanis Waldborn, he just passed Myrna again. Well, how long will that stop be to replace a rear wing? That was quite a long stop for Lucas Myrna. And Peckley I think, is fourth. Yeah, Peckley is now ahead. So this is really, really huge now. It's now Myrna trying to fight to get himself back up to fourth. It's a long stop for Volbon. Volbon down to eighth. Is Heyman going to come through? The clock's ticking. There is... Is this Heyman? Not oh, yet. Yeah, I think he's going to be... Oh, there, there is, is Heyman. And is Heyman going to get ahead? Heyman's in the points. Yanis Volborn is now ninth. Where he finished this race last year. Misha Smith is coming through. He Heyman is yet to pit. Smith might be with that strategy in the points and Volborn's coming out now oh and he's just always oh, nice to just stay oh. ahead of white oh but incredibly runs a little bit wide and alfie white's ahead and now Yanis Volborn's gonna have to fight his way back past alfie white so all eyes on misha smith up ahead as Volborn is gonna try and fight to recover in his last 16 laps unfortunately it's a very quickly dispatched move, and he goes for the undercut, and Alfie White's going to fight back to try and help. This fight that could cost a little bit of time, it could be all the time that Misha Smith needs. There's eight seconds between them on the road. Can Yanis Volborn shut the gap? Incredible. Well, no. that has shaken it all up. It has, yeah. Murmo is gaining a few points on uh, Janusz Wolborn, as it stands now. But Pascal Polans, who was not feeling confident at all, I mean, surely he's on the podium now, and he is going to close that gap as well. There was, uh, I think it was Gaziano. Yeah, off track. Until Alfie White in. For his final stop of the day. I think anyone stopping now is probably looking at in super soft territory. But what a debut for Alfie White. Who would have guessed ahead of this race that he would be battling Yanis Wolbon for a couple of laps? And it's going to be the same story in a few laps time, quite possibly, for Misha Smith as well. The super subs for Vela Cheetah Virtuali uh, doing a really good job. It has to be said. And Danny Benton Benton Rida is Rida. close to Knezvich. Yeah, I believe uh, all these guys have done their stops. And uh, Benton Reed are just clearing Gajano there. So getting a little bit wide and having to slow down. Is that Gajano coming back? I think Gajano knows he uh, needs to back out of that. So Heyman is now in for his final stop, and I think that is now everyone that is still due a pit stop out of the way. So I think we'll see no more scheduled pit stops from now on. I think so. Both Smith and Volborn clear Heyman. So it is now Volborn trying to hunt down Misha Smith in the time that is left. And... Uh, Imagine that Volborn has the pace, but you know that when he is pushing, he can put a wheel wrong, and he has done so a couple of times this afternoon. So it is not a done deal. Can Misha Smith hang on for a famous point for Vela Cheetah? Time will tell. In the meantime, at the front, the gap is about three seconds between Ruben Mester and Philip Pushka, both on the super softs. In the meantime, Lucas Murno is very close now, slowly gaining in to Gabriel Peckley. But once again, this afternoon, Mono will not maximise the result that was possible. I think Manchester was always going to win this. He's pulling away from Pushkin now as well when he had that awesome start. But Mono, I think P2 was on the cards for him today. So, yeah, he will at best finish P4 if nothing happens to the top three. And I think while he, um, you know, he wasn't at his best last time out today, 
I think it was just literally that split second moment. He, if he'd just been able to avoid Yanis Volborn, it was on. There was a, there was a chance for him. I mean, not guaranteed because he'd still have to try and reel in Philip Pushka, but he's uh, he's at least lost the podium this afternoon as a result of that contact. And now he's very close to Gabriel Peckley. Let's see how quickly he's going to get this move done. And how hard Peckley's going to fight it. Because obviously it is for position. He's got every right to fight it. But Peckley also knows fifth place wouldn't exactly be a bad result for him either. Um, and Lucas Murno does get the move done uh, without much resistance. Yeah, I imagine Peckley will now just do what he does best. And just keep his nose clean. Finish this race in P5. And take valuable, valuable points in the fight for P6 in the Constructors' Championship. They might they might even uh, throw his face on the livery of uh, next year's car <laughs> because he is earning them lots and lots of budget with these drives this year. It's huge. They're currently two points clear of Infernal Void um, and this will open up that gap um, to them. The only team behind them that is currently only scoring points is Bella Cheetah. Uh, but uh, at the minute, Yanis Volborn is shutting the gap quite quickly indeed. There he is. We were talking about Murno earlier. Uh, I think he even had an opportunity to, to secure second earlier this race in that battle with... Uh, Pushka and Wolborn, now they both had an off moment when they were fighting each other, and then Murna was doing a very ambitious move uh, on Pushka into Toro VIP, and then he lost the position to Wolborn again. I think this is already where he had a chance to potentially get into second early in this race. He looked the fastest of these three. So, yeah, this could have gone very, very differently for Murno. Board now with Yanis Volborn. His target just ahead. Not going to be in DRS range this lap, but I imagine the next lap will be a chance to strike. The, exactly the sort of thing that Misha Smith was waiting for with his strategy. But unfortunately, it's happened to an incredibly quick driver. And now he's on fresh tyres after those repairs. And the car obviously not too badly damaged otherwise apart from that wing. Although, as you can see, his wheel, Yanis Volborn's wheel, is slightly off-centre there as he was coming down that straight. Yeah, so he has got a little bit of suspension damage there, it has to be said. I guess this is no surprise after that. It's a very big hit they had there. Oh, well... It, as it was judged by the game and once again Yanis Wilborn is right on the ragged edge here and I don't I don't know why he's doing that I mean he is definitely quicker than Smith but then there is nothing in it for him he won't get gain 43 seconds on Daniel Benton today it will just not happen he will finish this race in eighth at best so there's no need to over push it now no absolutely not and uh this is the moment I think he's waiting for. Gaining before the DRS is even open. Back into the points. 43 seconds up the road to Daniel Benton Reader. Yeah, he's he's not going to reel that in, as you say. Just needs to run. And at the minute, he's already managed to collect uh, the fastest lap of the race. So that would be another point to him in the fastest lap competition which is a cash prize. At the minute, he's leading that with four uh, points to Lucas Murnow's three, with Pascal Polans and Ruben Meshda on one apiece, but he would move to five, and uh, with the races remaining, get a little bit closer to clinching that particular competition as well. Though I think that a push get and Daniel Bentonrida potentially could have a word about that as well. The gap between Pushka and Poland is 41 seconds. I don't think that Philip Pushka um, has any chance catching up to Ruben Meshida. So if 
Ooh, Benton Tree, the drifting round Toro VIP. Causing a bit of a show on for the uh, high earners in that tower there. I mean, if you got style points, you'd get a bucket load then. That was uh, superb to watch. He's pushing, trying to catch Alexander Knezovic. Uh, you can see him just there. He's just outside of DRS range at the moment, but he's uh, looking good. Daniel Benton Reader was in a very good run of points at the start of the season before finishing 10th in Hungary in a DNF in Italy. But uh, this looks like a return to the points this afternoon. The question is will it be two or three? Got a few laps still to decide his fate. a word in this quieter period on Reuven Mesheda who's um who's been brilliant this afternoon we've not seen too much of him but got the pole very confidently and comfortably brilliant start pulled away made sure he didn't get caught in the mess and then has just gone about his race made sure he made his stops at the appropriate times judged the last one I would say very well indeed made sure that he wasn't going to get pulled into a fight with Pushka and at the minute he's doing what he needs to so, um, a great drive from him this afternoon. Yeah, finally. Um, he had a horrible season for his standards so far. Uh, last year, he was up there. Battling Yanis Wolborn throughout, putting up a fight, even though only uh, joining the season in round four. So, uh, he still was able to put up a championship fight until the, the penultimate round, I think it was. Um, but this year, he, he's not been there. No, it's it's been a real shame for him. I'm optimal after being so close last season. But the good news is it will consolidate Reuven's fifth place in the championship and still give him an outside shot at maybe trying to catch um, Merno Polans and Pushko ahead of him, although that uh, is going to be tough as they are scoring very consistently. But in the Constructors for Optimal, it will move them into fourth ahead of Better Julia. Um, even if Benton really gets past Knezovic, uh, Optimal would have th uh, 42 points and Better Julia on 40. So uh, it would, this, this is essentially a place for them in the Constructors this win this afternoon and uh, a good chance to recover for them. And they'd, they'd only be um, a few points, I think about 10 10 points off um, SCMM as well. So, very good in terms of the constructors for them this afternoon. But obviously, for Reuben personally, who is still looking to drive next season, despite Optimal leaving the sport, um, a great result for him and a reminder that, you know, he's a race winner and this is what can do. Yeah, absolutely. I think he still is the... He still has the second most amount of wins in the WMSC, just behind uh, Janus Wolborn. So he definitely is a big signing for any team. So there is someone hitting Benton Reader. He's giving up on oh. six and instead going for a faster slap. Is he... No, he's missing a front wing, isn't he? Oh, Benton Reader's had a moment. Oh my goodness, and in the fight, in the press to try and catch Alexander Knezovic, he's had an off. How long is his pit stop going to last? This Is this going to be news for Misha Smith? He's trying to pick up a point. Here we go. Oh! And we've just had a call that uh, that was Alfie White who got collected in that, and he's gotten a stop-and-go penalty for dangerous driving under blue flags. And unfortunately, Daniel Benton Reader, while trying to catch Gnezovic, has just been caught uh, in, uh, essentially, I think Alfie, unfortunately, coming across unsafe rejoin. And uh, it, it doesn't uh, help his teammate either. Um, Misha Smith does not gain from that, but Yanis Volborn does. So he's now up to seventh. Um, so I think he'll be very happy with that. But yes, Daniel Benton Reader. He's, he does have a shot at trying to get the fastest lap with the super soft tyres, and there is only 
three seconds to see him in Volborn. Maybe he'll try and fight back. We will see. I was about to say, we, we might be about to see an unusual battle, but one that I would very much be looking forward to, between Yanis Wilborn and Daniel Bentonrida. Bentonrida is very quick on his day, but just never quite there. But today, he could prove what he can do about the proven championship winner. Now the tire offset is going to be very much in his favour, but he might even take an unexpected point in the fastest lap competition. Here we go. Charging through turn one. And we can just see Volborn off to the right of the screen there. Oh, he's gaining a lot. Already down the gap to 2.5 seconds. I think Volborn is also now stuck behind... It might be Axel of Flam, the only remaining or competing in Fur of Void. I think it is, so he's going to have to get out of the way again in a moment. See how easy it is from all oh, one Benton Reed to just pushing, you can tell. You can tell he's pushing. And he senses the opportunity. Four laps to go. I think now he's losing out. He might get DRS though. And the flam does just peel off, so that doesn't hurt him too much. And you're right, he might get DRS. The gap holding, it was at three seconds, it's now two and a half. That last lap from Daniel Benson Reader was a 1 minute 18.7. That is about a second off the fastest lap. Oh, sorry, no, that wasn't. His last lap was invalidated at some point. Yeah, he went off in turn one. That ah, yes, so, time, so so we don't get any kind of true reflection it's of what one, his pace it's was. It's below two seconds now. He's definitely quicker. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, the lack of, there's a distinct lack of grip on Volborn super soft by this point so Benton Reader is going to be able to push so if we can keep it on the track there is a real shot at a fastest lap for him and also the opportunity to nick back 7th place but he's getting close to Alfie White again <laughs> oh no flashbacks enabled where is White going to peel out he's not yet this is going to be costing him time but he might get he is getting DRS again I think he definitely is. And he's getting a little bit of slipstream out of here as well. And White stays over to the side. And White needs to get out of the throttle. Yep, he does. The gap down mm. to a second. And that's going to help him. That no. last lap was a 1 minute 17.9, which is 1.2 seconds faster than Yanis Volborn's last lap. So maybe not to nick the fastest lap off him, but the fight's on. He has now DRS from Wilborn himself. Oh, there is another lap. To go. Oh, is this Max Heyman? No, it isn't. I don't think it is. Can't tell at this point. I think it's uh, Paolo Willami. It is. There we go. So no no skin in this game, but he is about to uh, have these two bearing down on him at a very awkward point, and Volborn will be hoping he gets out of the way very sharpish, or maybe not. Maybe he'll be happy with the DRS. Oh, he won't get DRS now. Oh, but he gets in the way of Benton Reader. Reader. Oh, oh, come on, Paolo. And Yanis Volborn will be very, very happy about that. And oh. why is Paolo still in the way? So is he going to get DRS still, Daniel Benton Reader? Oddly enough. I guess this is a slam dunk penalty for Paolo Alami now. Does he, yeah, I, I, has he not realised he's not racing? I, I don't know. And there is a penalty now given there to Paolo Alami. And unsurprising. Oh. And Benton Reader very wide there. He's still trying to push. The gap is still six tenths of a second. He still has one more chance. 
And by the way, we just received, it is not just a drive through penalty, it's a big penalty. It's a 10 second stop and go penalty for Paolo Alami. Because he was interfering in that fight massively. Yeah, I think that's, um, that's fair enough. And he didn't even get immediately out of the way after the contact as well, so... That's very much fair enough. But here we go, the final lap being started by Reven Meshida. We stick with this battle. Can Daniel Benton really get the job done? But just at the crucial moment, the gap's gone back over to a second. Now it's back down again. Here we go. Now how quick is that bit of Juliana straight line? He's far away, but we know that the HLT is not that quick on a straight. The thing is, where he's, he's gained all the time has been through this complex of corners. So actually, is it going to be DRS up to Toro VIP that he looks to make the move? Here we go. All about the exit. Enough. All about the exit from four. He's got a much tidier run. DRS is open. He's going to look. He's going to look. He's pulled out of it. And now he's going to have to get creative. But we keep one eye on that. But Ruben Meshida becomes the fourth man in WMSC history to win in both 2023 and 2024. A double season winner. And you've got to say, it's been a long time coming. Ruben Meshida wins for the second consecutive year in Portugal. Philip Pushka in the end coming home just a second away. Good drive from him this afternoon. In the meantime, we rejoin this fight. Benson Reed is going to have to get creative, but I think he's run out of opportunities now. He get the run down through turns 13, 14, and 15. And Volborn is going to hang on. Benton Reed will be very frustrated with that. Oh, I think this lap would have been the one. It was much closer. Then we wait for Pascal Polans to come round. Across the line we go. An incredible, incredible result there. Now this, this once again, Gabriel Peckley, congratulations, P5, and this is a big haul of points in that fight for P6 and the Constructors. Oh. Well, congratulations to uh, Reba Meshter, we will get the top three in with us in a moment. Um, but what a what an interesting race! A very strategic battle this afternoon. Yeah, but I think Ruben never was really ac acutely in danger. He reacted very well to everything that was thrown at him, and ultimately he always ha had the edge over uh, Philip Puska, Lucas Murno, and Janis Wolborn pace wise. So uh, yeah, I think he's very well the, the deserved winner here today. Absolutely, in our provisional confirmation of the results, uh, Riven Meshida wins from Philip Pushka and Pascal Polans coming in third. Uh, after looking like a solid point scorer, but that that late contact with Lucas Murdo and Yanis Volborn sees Lucas in fourth, Volborn in seventh. Gabriel Peckley, as we've just seen, crossed the line in a very fine fifth place ahead of Alexander Knezovic. Daniel Benton Reader couldn't haul in uh, Yanis Volborn. Uh, so comes home eight in the last points paying spot. Misha Smith, a great debut for him. Well done to him for getting home ninth, just outside the points, not making the one stop work just quite. Max Heyman, the super sub, finishing in tenth. Uh, Gino Gagiano uh, comes home eleventh ahead of Alfie White. Axel Laflamme thirteenth, the only infernal void this afternoon. Paolo Alami fourteenth. Quercio, uh, Paolo, yeah, Paolo Alami fourteenth. Quercio 15th and João Fernando are only DNF this afternoon in 16th. And uh, we are now joined by uh, the top three and starting with the race winner, Reuven Meshida. Uh, Reuven, congratulations. Um, it looked pretty easy. You got pole, you led away from the start. Um, how easy was it this afternoon? 
it was terrible to be honest and <laughs> and yeah i just finished with 0.3 of fuel it was so fucking tight <laughs> i needed to save so much fuel over the ways uh and uh, I, my, my way's way harder than it should have been but very happy to win also as optimum in the reliefs it's very nice to win uh find a race with them and yeah uh, no, it's um, it's been a long time coming this season. You've been very unlucky, but you've still always been in the mix. And obviously, it's the second time you've raced here, second time you've won at this track. Um, obviously, there was discussions beforehand about how difficult it was to drive here. Was it a much different experience to your race win last year? Uh, yeah, definitely. As I already said, the fuel saving nearly uh, cost me the race win today. And... Yeah, uh, last year it was a bit easier as we had a more pace advantage. And Philip was also pretty quick this evening, so yeah. I, well, from the outside, it certainly didn't look like you were, you were um, worrying about fuel saving. I think you managed the gap very well. Um, how much were you keeping an eye on the battle behind you when everyone stopped? Because it felt like uh, that last stop was very much dictated by people stopping behind you. Uh, yeah, I always reacted to the other guys. Uh, I only saw in the um, scoreboard or in the leaderboard that it's something has happened between Yanis and Murano, it seems, because the gap to P3 was suddenly 40 seconds or something. But, yes. Yeah. So basically, there was some contact between uh, Yanis and Lucas and the exit of turn one, uh, and uh, they lost wings, essentially. So that, that changed the kind of fabric of the top three. Um, so yeah, that, that all... You, you managed to avoid all that and have a, have a quiet but still stressful afternoon <laughs> <after> from <laughs> it. Um, obviously, uh, Optimal leaving, but you're still looking to set, stay in the sport, um, still looking for a team for next season? Uh, at the moment, yes. I got some offers on the table at the moment, just thinking about them. And another thing I just want to say that I stream, I stream my ways, and uh, especially thanks to Seva Panasenko for giving me some info about uh, tire choice and uh, about what's happening behind me. So thanks to him. No, that's brilliant. And uh, we, yeah, we hope certainly hope to still see you on the grid next season. Congratulations, Ruben. Very well done. Yeah, thank you very much. Philip, to you, um, a very interesting fight for second place, and it was kind of in two phases. The first phase very much being having to fight to hang on to second place. How how did you view that fight between you, Yanis, and Lucas? Yeah, it was pretty fun. I, I think it was on the limit, but I had to do like what I did because it was the only way of getting onto the podium. Um, I think it was a little bit down in pace and factors, um, so I had to do something else. I did choose uh, low wings which was pretty okay, I thought, in the practice. Um, the tire wear was pretty damn bad, but whatever. If you have like 15k pH more the straights, uh, they pretty much like, can't pass you. So that I could just concentrate on getting bad, good exits and uh, preserving like uh, the last two corners, not to do any mistakes. So it worked pretty well. Um, they had the consequence, consequence that on the medium tire, even low, lower grip of the tire, I had basically no front end, so I had to to manage it somehow, um, the softer tire worked pretty good, pretty good. So I chose to extend the uh, the second stint, which worked pretty well. Um, yeah, in hindsight, I probably should have done a little bit more laps because the uh, victory was po obviously possible. But in the end, I think second second place is still good. Um, I don't know what happened as as soon as already said the other guys, but uh, a little bit good for the championship as well. So let's keep pushing for the next victory. Yeah, no, a very, very solid driving with this afternoon. You could see how much uh, Yanis was struggling to try and get past you in a straight line. Saw, so obviously, your move to the inside to try and force them the long way around. I think you defended very, uh, very well through those first few corners. Obviously, when you got free of them after the first pit stop, um, was your thinking that you could still win this, or were you purely thinking about a second? What was, what was kind of your view from the cockpit? Were you still kind of very much on for the win uh, to the very end? Uh, the last 30 laps was just pure qualifying laps, giving it all. I think Ruben was just a little bit too far away. If I hadn't, if I had lost a little bit less time in the first stint, I think it was possible. I was hoping for a late safety car, which probably would have given me the win because the first straight line speed, there's no way he could have pulled me up. So, yeah, I think it 
it went pretty well, especially considering the other guys had a little bit of a mess up. Um, yeah, I, I had a lot of fun today, so um, looking forward. That's brilliant. Uh, another great joy this afternoon, Philip. Very well done. Yeah, thanks. Pascal, to you, uh, an interesting afternoon for you. Obviously, um, qualifying wasn't ideal, but you seemed to be very strong during the race. And then it all came back to you at the very, very end. Um, are you surprised slightly to be on the podium? Um, yeah, I'm really surprised because I I think I was really slow in qualifying and also in the race. Um, so yeah, I, I, I tried to do something different in the race and stopped earlier to go to the softs, but the, the guys in front were almost as quick as I was on the mediums. Yeah, yeah. I think, think the end yeah, I, I, I can't can complain about, about the audio, even if it feels good and deserves it. Well, there's still a very solid drive to kind of stay out of the way. Obviously, noted that you were on a slightly different strategy from Yamis to try something different. Uh, was your last stop slightly dictated by seeing what happened between uh, Yamis and Lucas? Um, yeah, I mean, I would have gone in either way, but I I went in earlier by about two laps, I think, because I just wanted to have the best tyres. So I don't even let uh, Lucas into the DRS. If he would have been so much quicker, but... I think in the end it wouldn't have mattered if I went in for my original strategy or the slightly compromised one because of him. Now, obviously, Holland Racing Team, uh, high high downforce philosophy car, was expecting to be quite good this weekend, but it's um, it's been a, quite a bit of a struggle around this track, and you know it's been mentioned the, about the struggles of the track generally. Any ideas as to why you guys particularly have, have struggled this weekend? Nope, unfortunately not. <laughs> um, I mean, we would have thought that we'd struggle a bit more in Monza and then be stronger here, but it was just the other way around. And yeah, I, I tried lots of things with the setup, but everything didn't work out for us. So yeah, I hope it's a one-off. Our Silverstone should be more like Monza, I think, and we expect to be way better there again. Absolutely. A high downforce uh, setup for Silverstone you'd expect to be quite good indeed but yeah even even still despite uh uh you know not feeling at your best great to get a podium very well done congratulations yeah, thank you and uh, that brings us to the end of today in two weeks time as mentioned we head to silverstone and uh sadly robin you're not going to be with us for this one for the second year in a row you're missing silverstone yeah unfortunately i'm really gutted about it but uh yeah it is what it is so. No, but uh, hopefully it will still be an excellent race. And uh, who knows, with it being Britain as well, maybe the weather would rear its ugly head once again. We shall see. But uh, you can join me for that in two weeks' time for round 11 of WMC 2024. Thank you so, so much for watching. And we will see you then. Thanks very much.